Hey, it's Alex from Board Game Co. over here, and it's time for the Monday Roundup video. I have my little die over here, I got my water, I am all prepped to go. This is going to be a good week, a great week in fact, although it's actually going to be a lighter video than usual, I think. Maybe the 40 minute range, and I think next week is going to be even lighter than that, because it seems like Kickstarter is taking a temporary break, maybe for Black Friday, Thanksgiving, I don't know. In either case, I am going to embrace it as long as I can think that it actually is a lighter week and we'll see how that plays out now let's start the week off high with our picks of the week and that is going to be two games specifically and the specifically this category is games that are ending in the next seven days that are more than a good value more than an okay back but rather a solid back where you are almost certainly going to see more than your pledge back if you choose to pass on the game if you choose if you say it's not for you whatever it is and starting off the bat we have bard sung which i will talk about more when we actually get to the uh, update section where i'll be talking about it but in this case just focusing on the value aspect even though there's who knows what even though steamforge games has a bit of a history in terms of different things different issues their games have historically held their value at least at first as people desperately want to get their hands on them because cool miniatures and the promise the potential because not everyone watches no pun included and them ripping apart horizon zero dawn or whatever it is so in any case that is bard song i believe it'll hold its value and then some next up we have other fields which technically is not ending in the next seven days but i did a video on it last week basically they opened up the pledge manager for this one you can now back it to get wave 2 shipping this is a solid one that will 100% hold its value i'm including it here because i don't actually know when it does end and because i just talked about it so why not but I will say, I believe in this one so much, this is going to be my Kickstarter pick of the month for, uh, basically, on my Patreon, I have Kickstarter insurance, which is this kind of guarantee that you will get your money back if you can't sell it, this, that, whatever it is. Uh, terms and details apply. Basically, I take the game from you, and I give you your pledge back, and I sell it to someone else. But it's a guarantee that these things are holding their value to the point that I believe in it enough that I'm putting my money where my mouth is. That is Patreon exclusive. But either way, check out the link down below for more information or terms or whatever it is. But that is other fields and uh, Bardsung. From there, we go to the cancelled Kickstarter, not cancelled, to the not yet funding Kickstarters, and that is going to be four of them this week. We have Dice Splice to begin with. Dice Splice is going to be a light little dexterity towering game, and this one actually looks adorable. It has polyomino pieces, but it's not really a typical polyomino game. You're using the polyomino pieces to slowly but surely stack the dice on top of each other. It looks adorable. It looks like the kind of game my kids would actually really like. I was kind of tempted by it. Unfortunately, the price point plus shipping puts this at a $40 game for something that's light and quirky and interesting to my kids and I don't know if that's worth it for what I'm looking at it for. I wish them the best, hope it funds. Then watch the video, by the way. The video will help me show you. Boom! You see that? It was just completely surprise like you see these little cubes and you're like what's going on here and then they pop out you watch the rest of the video too it's also funny although that first five seconds is for sure the best part uh, next up we're going to have king of the roll a bazillion jiu-jitsu fighting game this is an interesting one we have two thousand dollars or by the way i should note dice dice place as well is about to fund it's like three thousand dollars away from funding it should almost certainly fund safe bet there not safe safe bet but probably in any case uh 14 days to go on on king of the roll this is two and a half thousand dollars remaining it will almost certainly fund and this is going to be a combination of a board game plus a passion project this is clearly coming from someone who loves jiu-jitsu and who wants to integrate it into a board game which is both a pro and a con it can be a pro when you have when, you, when the board game is prioritized first and foremost the most famous example obviously would be wingspan where you have bird watching or birds combined with a solid board game so it can be an opportunity to bring something into the limelight when you integrate it with a good board game and focus heavily on those mechanics the problem is very often that passion project is coming first and foremost and sometimes it might be coming at the expense of a good game it might be like i want to do this i want to integrate that in a way that is true to what the uh, the 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 originator what the motivator is without being as true to the board game side of things and this is one where i'm definitely wary of that i don't know how it's actually going to play out i don't know if it's a solid game or not it could very well be but the degree of technical specification on jiu-jitsu the artwork showing actual moves the fact that he's pitching this to gym owners uh it does make me a little bit wary it does not mean you shouldn't back it it just makes me a little bit wary from there, we have the Calliope Game Nights Extravaganza. This is one that I really hope it does back. I really hope it does fund. It's 12000 out of 20000 with 19 days to go. Uh, I already did reviews on these three games, on Mass Transit, Allegory, and Enchanted Plumes. Short version is I love Mass Transit and Enchanted Plumes. I think they are solid filler games. I 100% want those in my collection. Allegory is more take it or leave it for me. I thought it was a solid game, but I have lots of solid games, and you have to pick and choose the ones that are best for you. Uh, but overall, I do recommend checking out this bundle. I thought it was incredibly solid, incredibly well done. I feel like they 
I feel it could have been done better in terms of the overall presentation. Think board game tables. Board game tables, if they would have had a, a set of three games, they would have made them all look similar, feel similar, part of a set that you don't want to miss out on. The disjointed aspect of three different games together doesn't make people feel as invested in, let me jump in on that game, let me jump in on that product, and that, I think, can be hurting them to a degree. It, presentation is a big part, especially when you're bundling multiple things together. That being said, all that critique aspect aside, I do recommend checking them out. I really am a fan of these two games and want to get my hands on them because I sadly had to send my copies on because they're prototypes and someone else needed to review them. And so, hard choices in life. Hard choices. Next up, we have Levitation Masters of Magic. This is another uh, passion project combined with a board game. This is for people who liked magic who decided to turn it into a board game. And this falls into an interesting zone. So a few different things here. To begin with, sadly and unfortunately, I think it's having a hard time. It's currently at 5,000 out of 16,000 or 5,700 out of 16,000. And I think a big part of that is going to come from the fact that the game itself, while the game might be great, I have no idea, I'll tell you pros and cons in a second, uh, while the game might be great, the artwork and graphics and components do not look like a finished product. They look like a prototype to a large degree, which is unfortunate. Uh, the You have to sell people on games, especially on Kickstarter, most more so than anywhere else, where people are looking at gorgeous, deluxified things again and again and again. Your, 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 your actual table presence has to stand out on Kickstarter. I think in this case, it really doesn't. I think the artwork is, is in, my, in my personal taste, unfortunately, I think the artwork is subpar. I think that the components look okay at best. This is not selling you on a deluxified experience. Hopefully, it's a good game. As far as, well, quotes, we have Rado saying, perfect game for me. So so hopefully there's enough of a core game here that is a solid game for the right people. And then sadly, and this is where my pet piece of the testimonials comes into play, we have Dice Tower saying, I like the historical aspect of this game. That's not a good testimonial. It might be that he loved the game. It might be. I don't know. But uh, project creators, if you get a quote from anyone, I don't care if it's Dice Tower, I don't care if it's me, I don't care if it's anyone. If you get a quote that talks about things like, I like the historical aspect of this game, like that is the best thing you could have said. You couldn't say the game is great, the game is amazing, I love the mechanic, I love this, I love that. You have to say, I like the historical aspect of this game. That is that is not a confidence-inspiring quote. Do not use those testimonials on your page. If that's all you get, don't use them, in my opinion. And if that's not what you got, maybe, maybe you pulled it from the video, then pull something else. Find something else that's better or don't use anything at else. We literally wanted to keep playing. That is significantly better. Use that. It's pet peeve on testimonials. You want to inspire people to buy your game. You don't want them to... You don't want people to think that that's the best thing they could have said. Like, I wanted to play that game. That's not a... Whatever. Anyways, moving on from there. We have the update section. So this is going to be Dark Venture Battle of the Ancients. Dark Venture Battle of the Ancients is a game that I talked about last week. And basically, this is a small update to say, well, first of all, I'm backing it. And second of all, to plug the Quackalope podcast, the weekly quack with myself and Quackalope, which is Jesse and Jen. And basically, in last week's episode, which I'll link down below, Jesse was talking about Battle of the Ancients. And the more he talked about it, the more I got sold in it. Yes, sometimes other people are... High man for me and so he basically got me interested in the game and now i'm trying to pass that on to you you should listen to the podcast listen to how he talks about it because i was totally not interested in this before the art is just not my thing at all and he basically sold me on the game it does not mean it's a game for you not in the slightest but between him and the someone else he one of his uh members one of his discord members a successful geek who played it with him and he's also interested in the game so there we have you know two more opinions of people who played it who are saying that they are interested that they love it that they like it so i am reluctantly and well not reluctantly but i have changed my mind and the fomo is is hard in this one and i am going to back dark venture battle of the ancients and again listen to the quackalo podcast weekly quack it's a solid entertaining show i am of course biased but it is entertaining then from there we have Bardsung. Bardsung is one that I am constantly torn about. So this is basically, they are continuing to focus on two things that do not sell me on the game. They are continuing to focus on the accessibility of the game, how easy it is to teach, how easy it is to get going, how easy and understandable and easy, easy to keep using the accessible aspect of how easy it is to get people going, which is not a bad thing in and of itself. But when you combine that with the continued focus on, on RPG elements, on writers, on other people from outside the typical board game space and dragging in from other spaces, and that makes me concerned that it's not a game catered to board gamers. I am I don't know, I could be wrong here, but I, I keep getting the feeling that it's not being pitched to me. I get the feeling that's being pitched to an RPG gamer. It's being pitched to someone else who's interested in the world, the universe, the universe, but is not a typical Gloomhaven player or any typical board game that would involve Dungeon Crawl. So it is 
Again, this is all my feeling. This is my feeling. There's no 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 facts here whatsoever. But that feeling that I am not the target audience, that I am not the one being sold on this game, makes me concerned that it might also just not be the level of game that I am looking for here. As of now, I am out on this one. I am paying attention to it. I want to see where it actually heads up, where it actually ends up. It could very well be that it will be amazing. I don't know. But it's the combination of Steamforge games and their issues or track record combined with me feeling like I'm not the target audience here makes me makes me as of right now passing on this game, but we'll see. FOMO is a thing. I may change my mind. We'll have to play it out. But as of now, I'm out on Bardsung. As far as updates, as far as uh, their what they're doing in terms of their, their add-ons, they've added a few more things. They have not added any more deluxified big boxes yet. We do have five days to go, so there's still time. I don't think it'll be as high, or four days to go. I don't think it'll be as high as I originally thought it would be. But if they, I'm assuming there's one more add-on coming. I could very well be wrong. I don't know. They did just add the Foreteller app, and that actually kind of does sell me a little bit, but not enough to bring me in, for at least for right now. Then we have Power. Power Rangers. Power Rangers, this is more of a correction from last week. Last week, I mentioned that it was like, I, I, and I did say I wasn't sure, but nonetheless, I said I think it's a cooperative game, and it's definitely not a cooperative game. What threw me is I knew that the heroes were fighting the villains. What I missed was that the villains are controlled by another player. This is a two-player head-to-head game or a team-based game. It's head-to-head, one player controlling the Power Rangers, one player controlling the, the villains or whatnot. So definitely a correction in case that makes you more or less interested in Power Rangers. And then lastly, for the update section, we have Four Humors. Four Humors is a game that I covered last week. The very short version is since then, I've had the opportunity to play it like four or five times. And I have a full review coming Saturday, but the short version is I really am enjoying this game. It's very, I'll go more into it in the whole review. Ultimately, it has that aspect of, of screwage and bluffing and logic and betrayal and deduction and all that combined with this prisoner's dilemma aspect of trying to get your tokens on the board in the right places in order to ultimately win. Uh, but the handling of the game, it does a solid job and it plays in like 30, 45 minutes. We, my friends and I have been knocking out game to game, back to back. It's really enjoyable. I prefer it at, well, I've played it at 3, 4, and 6 so far. I prefer it at 3 and 4 than 6. I have not yet had an opportunity to play it at 5. I don't know where that one would lie. I know, whatever. Either way, it could be a bit of a mess at 6, in my opinion, and not as much control, and I like I like having more control. Ultimately, really like this game. If you don't mind being lied to directly to your face, if you don't mind a little bit of screwage, a little bit of backstabbery, well, then this might be a game for you, and this whole the whole Four Humors theme as a theme doesn't actually pull me in thematically but at the same time i like what the game is doing and they have this like pull to potentially change the 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 actual listings to aggression or something else and not call it four humors and i think that would be a horrible mistake i am liking what the game's presentation is even though it's not a selling point to me at least initially uh this kind of like the uss freedom actually uh, which i'll be covering soon so let's save that for uss freedom then we start with the new thing. So, Hibachi. Hibachi is going to be a reprint. This is a reprint of a game, and, a re- and this is something I focus on whenever there's a reprint. The, the game itself is a reprint of a game that's rated a 6.9 on Board Game Geek. Let's just start with a 7. Solid rating. Also not like, oh my gosh, I must play that game rating. And at least the core game, from my understanding, is the same. The expansion over here is going to add more and tweak out that gameplay, but it's a bit of a dexterity combined with a Euro in the sense that you have this, dext- this dexterous element of trying to throw your food chips or whatever onto the board, knock other people's chips, do that, combined with the Euro aspect of the the engine building or, or the cars or the the various things you're getting your hands on to play the game uh that doesn't really pull me in myself i tend to be very 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 picky whenever it comes to dexterity games i, I like crokinole and other dexterity games i'm just picky about actually giving them a shot uh check out Meepool university's video for how to play they did a solid job as usual and in terms of the value in terms of should you back it should you not so basically there is a kickstarter egg over here the kickstarter exclusive fried egg poker chip is being offered here as the extra that you are getting unfortunately Unfortunately, the rest of the package is just not really good enough, in my opinion. So, like looking over here, for example, we have where's the numbers over here? The retail MSRP. I'm trying to find the MSRP. Basically, the $31 pledge on roughly I can't find the MSRP over here. We had over here uh, $62.45. Give me one second. Let me pause for a second. And here we go. Basically, I wanted to find the MSRP section, so it is going to be a $40 MSRP for Hibachi and $20 for the Hot and Spicy expansion. When they're charging you $31 and $46, by the time you factor in what MSRP actually costs, a $40 MSRP doesn't cost $40. It costs like $33. So they're basically charging you roughly the cost plus shipping and giving you a fried egg promo. So I think this is a, I mean, if you really want that fried egg, fried egg promo situation, go ahead and back it, or if you want to support the creator, but as far as whether this is a good back or not, I cannot say this is a good back. I think it's, you know, you can get it cheaper at retail, and you're probably not missing out on much, unfortunately. Wish I could be more positive. Uh, from there, we're going to go to Upzone. This is not going to be a should you back it in any way, shape, or form. I do not know the market on terrain. I will say, my, when I did a video on this, I did a full video on this one, and I will say I got a lot of comments from people saying this is way too 
too expensive, way too much for what it is. That's not my market at all. Totally hear you. Not contradicting or agreeing whatsoever. Uh, basically, I just thought it was cool. I still think it's cool, by the way. I mean, if you look at this, let's see if we can show you the video. It's basically just pop-up modular terrain. You can watch my review of it, or not really review, just more of a showing you the stuff. I think it's a cool concept. I think the problem with it is going to come down to A, price, and then B, it's a little more locked in than you would like. They kind of need some sort of situation where you don't have, right now the way it works inherently is you have big blocks of terrain and something in the middle. So it's constant blocks, middle, blocks, middle. They need some sort of way to kind of bridge that gap or put overlay something to make the, the actual situation a little bit more variable in what it does. But overall, I mean, you can watch the video on the screen right now. It does look like it could be the a fairly cool thing for a Warhammer player or a D&D &D player or whatnot. Ultimately, I think it looks cool. Not talking about the value at all on this one. And not just be clear, was not paid for this. I'll let you know if I ever get paid for things. In no way was I paid for by Upzone. I'm just I just thought it was cool. That's all. I, I think things are cool sometimes. I'm allowed to do that. In any case, USS Freedom. I don't know why I'm sniffing at you. I need I need I need more coffee. Let's take a water break while we're here. USS Freedom. Watch my review of this one or just hit back. I don't know why I said that. It may not be a game for you. Watch my review of this one and then hit back. Uh, USS Freedom is a fun, cooperative, open-world, free-roaming space theme board game. That is me just reading this text up here. Ultimately, this is a game that is space exploration, very Star Trek-y, although more humor-based. Think, uh, think, uh, what's that game? It's the Orville and then... Something Quest, Galaxy Quest. Galaxy Quest is the best movie of all time, or one of the best movies. You should 100% watch that movie. When you're done watching Galaxy Quest, come back and back USS Freedom. This is a game that is a whimsical, adorable theme in which all these cosplayers are trapped on a spaceship where they become the players they were cosplaying us, which basically leads to a situation where you have Khal Drogo and someone who's definitely not Harry Potter fighting side by side. I think it's actually not Khal Drogo either. It's Scythian, someone who's not Harry Potter, and Thor, because Thor is public domain. So it has all these characters dressed up as other characters, not with the same names to protect intellectual property and all that, but parodying them, and then they're all fighting together on a spaceship. I really enjoyed this game. I've played a bunch of sessions so far. I need to play it more. My, You can watch my review. My biggest critique was around I didn't love the uh, the management of the game. I kind of want an app for this game so I can deal with the management, but it's not overwhelming. It's not the end of the world. It's just unnecessary stuff that's getting in the way of me actually having my adventures where I try to puzzle out the ship and figure out how to win each battle using the combination of different powers and abilities, and I love powers and abilities. Uh, as far as whether you should or shouldn't back this one, this is going to be... Where are we? One second... Sorry about that. Basically, Dreamcraft Games over here, they have four other games, under, three other games under the belt. They have Aeol Aeolus, Theosis, um, what else do they have? They had another one. No, it's Aeolus and Theosis. And basically, their games are falling into this, this annoying category of it, they don't have enough, their games have done okay on Kickstarter, the games have had, you know, a few hundred backers for each game, their games are actually fairly well rated on Board Game Geek, if you check out Board Game Geek, their games are pretty well rated, but it's also with a small sample size, so, you know, look into them more. I can tell you I've only played one of the games, USS Freedom, and I've really been enjoying it, I have not had the opportunity to try the other ones, so I can't comment on that. As far as whether you should or shouldn't back it, this game is actually fairly reasonably priced, given my own perception of the content I'm getting, coming at $80 for the Deluxe Pledge, granted there's no miniatures, but you get a ton of stuff in that giant box. I think it's a decent price for the game. As far as whether it holds its value, that is a trickier one. Because of the fact that their games typically and historically have had lower demand, there's certainly no guarantee this will hold its value. It ultimately comes down to whether you find the right backer who wants the right game down the road, not backer, someone else. Someone else down the road hears about the game, finds it, and they want a copy, and then who is selling them at what price. Uh, th their games, the only one I believe that has currently uh, hit the market is Theosis, and there's like four people trading it, and like one person selling it. That is a small sample size, so I cannot confidently tell tell you that it'll hold its value, but I can confidently tell you that getting your hands on this after the fact with the Kickstarter extras or whatever it is, is unlikely. This may be your best chance to get it, and you may be able to get your money back, but I'm certainly not guaranteeing that. And that is USS Freedom. I do like the game. I recommend getting the game because I like it, but that's a separate story entirely. Uh, moving on from there, we have Mission Catastrophe. So Mission Catastrophe is going to be one. Give me a second. Apologies for the constant pausing and breaks here. I have a bunch of kids that are being in the background and I have to pause more than usual today which is less fun than me because I don't like pausing but in any case Mission Catastrophe is one that is, first of all, watch this video, an adorable video. I think it's great. In fact, there are a bunch of content creators who put out videos. There's Quackalope, there's a Hungry Gamer, there's Meeple University. There are a bunch of others as well. Watch the videos. They have a good video section down below, some solid videos. The game looks interesting. The game looks appealing. The problem here, and, and it's available on, t on Tabletop Simulator. So if you want to if you want to play it, give it a shot. It's available on Tabletop Simulator. The biggest problem we're going to have here is the price point compared to the weight of the game that they are trying to have here. We're asking between uh, $54 for the Deluxe Edition 
edition and this whole entire kickstarter this whole entire game is kickstarter exclusive so if you want to check out the game the the game it's sorry the game itself is not kickstarter exclusive but this version of the game with all the deluxe extras is kickstarter exclusive so there's no retail edition here there's extras there's game trays there's, there's miniatures there's deluxified everything i don't know firmly what is and isn't going to be in the retail edition because they didn't say or at least if they said i didn't see it but for 54 dollars you get the deluxe game and then for 78 dollars you get the maximum danger expansion i think they may have been better off not having the expansion here because given the game weight what you're going to have is you're going to have most people who are interested are going to of course want to go all in but then they're faced with this question of it's 78 dollars for a game that looks to be a bit on the lighter side this is going to be a pandemic alternative it's a cooperative game with a few different modes so there's a mode where you're all cooperating together there's a mode where you are at the, where you're the first the last person who actually gets out on the skate pod is the only winner so it's semi co-op there are different aspects and different ways to play the game there's solo so there's different ways to play this game and that could be a good thing but also could dilute what the ideal experience is uh the game weight the weight class it's in makes it a slightly harder for people to spend 78 dollars plus shipping to get their hands on it as far as whether it'll hold its value i think that's going to come down to the ratings I'm, I'm when i look at this game when i look at mission catastrophe the game that most comes to mind is actually monster slaughter in terms of a deluxified great version of a game but with a weight class that is a punching a little bit low its weight class in terms of kickstarter and price and all that stuff i think it could very well hold its value i also think it's a risk but if you want to get the deluxe version with everything as opposed to waiting for retail then this could be your best option and there's no firm retail plan set they just said this is a kickstarter version of the game that will be exclusive in and of itself so there may or may not be retail depending on just how popular or how well it actually does i will say for myself just because on a personal note what really makes me want to back this game and it's a stupid reason but it's the reason is over here was it this update over here they have the mark watney special they're adding the botanist roll, a potato, and something else. Uh, some the, I don't know if anything else, but a, a potato and the mar and a botanist roll. I mean, I am. You say the Mark Watney roll, and I am interested in your game. I love the Martian, and the idea that there's a Martian aspect to this game. It's I'm a sucker for small things. It is what it is. I do not know if I'm currently backing it. I plan on watching more videos to find out for myself. Uh, like I said, value-wise, I think it definitely falls into that risk category. Risk does not mean it will be a bad value. It just means that I am not confident that this will hold its value, given the weight class of the game and the price point of the, granted, very deluxified extras with game trays with everything else. And that should take us to Asking for Troubles. Asking for Troubles, really reprint and expansion. So this is going to be, well, Asking for Troubles. Asking for Troubles is a 2-7 to seven player worker placement game that falls into the family weight, ask, family weight category. It's a lighter game in which you're going to be worker placement, but worker placement that doesn't block spaces. There's this bumping mechanism where when you bump someone, there's a, I, I can't remember the exact rules. I think both you and they get a reward. I'm not certain. But either way, you can bump people off spots to take their actions. It has a very orange theme. In fact, I believe it takes place on the planet Orange, because why not? And overall, this is a light family weight worker placement game. It's got a lot of testimonials, a lot of reviews. This game's already out, to be clear. What this Kickstarter is for is for the expansions, and you could get everything. So, what you have over here is we have the two expansions. If I can find them over here. We have two expansions. So we have the base game, which you get just the base game. You can get both expansions. You can get the base games plus both expansions. You can get everything new, which includes some deluxified bits and whatnot. Or you can get everything for new, sorry, everything, yeah, everything new versus everything entirely, which includes all the stuff. So different options in terms of how much money you can spend here. Ultimately, as far as the value proposition, unless you're getting those deluxified extras that may not be available elsewhere, I think that this one is does fall into a eh kind of uh, ca category of value. Basically, they're giving you a discount on MSRP and they're giving you a promo pack, but the discount on MSRP is basically more than what you'd pay for the game in retail, and then they're charging you shipping and giving you a promo pack. So the whole thing ends up being a wash, and it depends ultimately on how how much you care about that promo pack. So it falls into the whatever if you want to back it, back it, but it's certainly not giving you a huge incentive to back. Although they are giving you a, tr a, a TARDIS over here, not the TARDIS, the Trobus. The Trob Trobles really enjoyed. The Trobles really overjoyed by anagram silliness which is a solid anagram i i approve on that count and from there we're going to go to creature comforts okay so this game this game i really like and i've played this game i have a review with my daughter up if my first time my daughter has been on the channel although she will be coming back to the channel again uh, creature comforts is an adorable family weight game by kids table board games i've gotten a bunch of questions in my review of whether i think it's a uh, what what the weight class of the game is so overall the, this is my opinion so take it for what it's worth my opinion is this is a family and game way approachable game i do not think this is competing with everdell would i be totally fine playing with a bunch of adults adult heavy gamers i would be but it certainly 
would not be my first pick at all. I think it is an okay game for advanced strategy gamers, and I think it's an excellent gateway and family weight game. As far as the game itself, it's basically it's worker placement with not really that much of a competitive worker placement, set collection, building stuff, lots of fun stuff going on in the game. Again, watch my review for more information, but overall, I really enjoyed this one, and I can recommend it. And it looks like it's on track, we'll see where it actually ends up, but it's on track to be Kids Tables Board Games, uh, their highest funded game so far. They have continuously been escalating their Kickstarters for this uh, this brand, Kids Table Board Games, and each one has gotten, well, more deluxified than the last, and better looking than the last, and all good things across the board. Uh, as far as the, as far as will it hold its value or not, a bit of a hard one, well, not, well, we'll see. So, to begin with, we have the, pl the pledge levels. We have 30... 30 $8 US for the retail edition of the pledge level with 23 backers and that's a good choice I'm glad there's only 23 and that's because if you look for $46 basically for an additional $8 You get the Kickstarter version which comes with all the upgraded resources that they're charging like $15 $20 for so That $6 upgrade is a clear no-brainer Which is why we have 2,500 backers over here and 23 over here if those 23 people could move over to the updated version I think that I think it's a mistake that you're on this version. It must be a mistake I can't imagine why you'd be here the you not want six dollars for deluxified chunky wood bits i don't know in any case this is obviously the much better back to get your hands although you know what if you are someone who's backing at the retail edition and you intentionally are doing so let me know in the comments down below i'm always intrigued into what was it the six dollars did you not care about the chunky bits did you not know i am curious why people do some things that sometimes i think make no sense but obviously everyone has different reasons so it could be it could be anything in any case as far as will it hold its value so the reason this is slightly problematic is not because it's actually a problem but because usually I like to look at past Kickstarters. The problem is Kids Table Board Games has continuously been changing their model of just how much extras or exclusives or deluxified stuff they offer in their Kids Table lines. And so looking at their past Kickstarters, even Fossilisis or whatever it was, that one didn't have nearly as much extras to differentiate in this game, and that one has, has only just started hitting shelves, so I can't even look at it. Which means the last one I could look at is Rec Raiders, and that barely had anything extra, which makes it a hard comparison to make against this one. So I basically have to evaluate Creature Comforts in its own right, and in its own right, you're basically paying, if you're US-based, you're paying roughly $60, including shipping, for a solid game with a ton full of extras, from deluxified meeples to to all the, like, the hundreds of, like, I think it's like 140, something like that, of deluxified bits, and by the way, you can buy extras, which is not necessarily a bad buy either. For over here, if we go over here, and a game trades, you got game trades, you have, you have a solid amount of stuff packed into a game, I think it will hold its value, I think it's an adorable game, if you look at the testimonials on this page, you will see person after person after person who has really liked this game, enjoyed this game everyone i know who's played it has liked it so again the the weight class it's in is a different conversation we can have but as far as being a solid game for where it's at it is 100 a solid game for where it's at i am excited to add it to my collection i am upset upset's the wrong word i am sad that they made me send it on my wife literally wanted to play it again and we couldn't because i had to send it to the next person and so 154 wooden resources you can buy an extra set for 15 dollars us for an extra set of 194 pieces again which by the way is such an amazing deal i think the only shame here is that they're not as universal like we have things like yarn and mushrooms and books which are not as universal in their application to other games so i think it's an amazing deal if you have any other game that could utilize the stuff that's a great deal if you just want extras for yourself i don't know uh, but 15 dollars for 194 wooden resources is a solid deal uh, i'm just i'm not getting the extras because i don't need them but it is a solid deal uh, as far as the game itself you should 100 back it i'm sure i could be wrong but i'm sure it'll hold its value just the amount of goodness they are cramming into that box between deluxified resources between game trays between the game itself and the continuous stress goals that are being unlocked granted pay attention to the stretch goals only the ones with the kickstarter exclusive are actually exclusive the rest will show up in retail as well but look new wood almanacs like that's one of the one for one of the uh the upgrades you can buy the upgrade tiles you can buy they use them for that in any case that is basically creature comforts which brings us to rule benders rule benders so rule benders is a tricky one this is one where thematically i am simultaneously interested and not interested now this is a game about bending the rules which means the first thing they have to do out the gate is convince you me everyone that it's not flux and it's not flux, I can tell you that. I've looked into this enough that it's not flux. The problem is the type of rule changes there are are fairly less less, um, I guess, intriguing for a game called Rule Benders. So, for example, let's give one example. One example would be that there is an there's a hand limit in the game. And throughout the course between rounds, there's this aspect of changing rules. 
and you can change both the universal rule as well as your difference. So for example, you can adjust it so that the hand size shifts and you can now hold seven cards. And you can also have your own personal modifier where you can hold plus two to whatever the hand size is. So now you can hold nine cards, other people can hold seven. So they have this, I mean, the aspect that you have a unique bonus is not rule benders, that's just games and shifting things around, which is normal. Any game that has any form of, of, de, of, there's a word for it, of asymmetry that develops throughout the game. I don't remember what the word is, but any game has that any game that has that is going to have that aspect. So that's fine. But the commonality, the aspect that you're changing a rule across the board is interesting. It just seems to be applied in a way that is not nearly as dramatic as I would think for a game called Rule Benders. There's small modifications to the rules, and then past that they have a solid experience in it. Uh, overall, I think it's going to be a solid game. I'm not I'm not questioning the game. I just I just the whole rule thing was an interesting thing that I was looking into because I really wanted to find out what was going on. As far as the pledge levels and the should you back it or whatnot, so we have $65 for the Electron Edition and we have $95 for the Nuclear Edition. Now, to be clear, these games will not, the game itself may be sold at retail, these versions of the game will not be sold at retail. They're going to be Kickstarter plus extras for whatever, conventions or website or who knows what. Uh, in, each, in each game, you're going to choose a bunch of themes, so it's prehistoric, fantasy, whatever. And those themes will decide how the game plays out. It will affect the the gameplay style, which does add, it does allow for a lot of potential additions or expansions or things that will mix up the gameplay, give you different experiences. Think of a think of Smash Up. Think of what's that little deck builder? Jeez, I can't remember. There's a deck building game that I love. Um, uh, the Dale of Merchants, where every single set of cards mixes up and changes the gameplay style. And that's ultimately what the game is giving you. As far as the Deluxified Edition, so they're, they're giving you the Deluxified Edition in general. And then past that, they have, let me see if I can find it here. They have, here's the, the options. We have the Rule Benders for $65. going to give you dual layered game board pieces. Dual layered is nice. A custom insert. It's going to give you a bunch of game cards, to cardboard tokens, etc., etc. Custom colored meeples, custom acrylic pieces and stuff. And all that. And then for, for $95, an extra $30, they're giving you the miniatures, which are $20 on their own, and 70 custom metal chips, which do look cool, and they're $20 on their own. So basically a $10 discount to getting them yourself. Uh, past that, they had other add-ons. So they had, you could buy for $6, you can buy a whole new theme, which if you're getting the game, you should get the extra new theme. It'll give you, it'll mix up your gameplay possibilities, and it's six bucks. As far as will it hold this value or not, this is going to be from Game Brewer. Game Brewer, historically, they produce very deluxified games, and their games in the past, games like, uh, what do they have? They have Gugong, they have Fujikoro, they have Paris. Pra practically speaking, their games in the past have done a decent job not losing a ton of value, but you're definitely going to lose, not definitely, you're probably going to lose something. Meaning, if you look at Fujikoro, if you look at Gugong, and you look at what people paid for their deluxe pledges versus what they were able to sell them for later, there definitely is a loss there. It's not a huge loss, but once you, if you pay, let's say, let's say you buy this game for $95 and you open it up and you play it, you might only be able to sell it for $75. 80 or whatnot so it's not a question of will you can get whether you can get this later at retail because this is a deluxe edition it's totally different but as far as whether it'll hold its value it, it does a decent job holding its value historically speaking but with a bit of a dip so that's what i would say here expect a dip in the game or you can just buy in the secondary market down the road yourself if you're patient or whatnot although then you're getting a used game which is a whole different conversation and that is going to be rule benders from there we have aqua garden so this is one that's interesting to me this is one that I'm a little confused by this one. And what I mean by that is there's like no people reviewing this game at all. There's no content creators at all covering this game, except for people like myself who are just looking at the game and talking about it. I didn't see a single person who was like sent a review copy, which is already a fascinating thing. And then you combine that with $100,000 pledge and 1,300 backers. And I'm like, wow, this company or this designer or someone here has a huge fan base. That's the only explanation I can I can think of. This is not Kickstarter hype alone. And I even looked to see where the pledges were going. Maybe it's all from Asia. Maybe there's a huge fan base there. But if you look at the actual pledge levels, we have like, what do we have here? We have... Uh, uh, I saw them over here. We had like 52 back. Nope, nope, not that one. We had 29 to bat to Asia and 978 not to Asia. So it's not like I don't know where the support is coming from. I'm assuming the company has a loyal fan base. Uh, the reason that's relevant is the game itself is actually fairly expensive for what you're getting. The good news is they, there's two options: there's a pledge level with the expansion, without the expansion. So over here we have the pledge level for forty-six dollars for with the without the expansion. And then $62 with the expansion, and the expansion is Kickstarter exclusive. Now, there's no guarantee this will hit retail or whatnot, but the fact that they're announcing a Kickstarter exclusive expansion and the rest is not marked as such means they have ideally plans for retail, whether or not it will hit retail. And then they're giving you $60. Again, it's, it's a lot of money for what they're asking for. As far as will hold value, it's not is a tough one because... While the game is doing well with overall a decent amount of backers, decent amount of funding for what it is, especially considering there's no content creation around it whatsoever, 
that does potentially mean that it will see that following down the road. But also, if the following is exclusively from people who just love the company, then that those people are ideally backing it now, which means it's harder to sell it down the road. So this one is going to fall into the category of one of the other ones that I can't remember which one it was today. But basically, it is one that I am certainly not confident on that will hold its value, but it may well hold its value. I think Moonrakers. Moonrakers is a classic example of one that I would not have in any way thought it would hold its value, but sometimes they do. Uh, so I have no confidence in Accor Garden, but also it might be your best opportunity to get it, especially if it doesn't go to retail with US distribution. So if you're tempted, by all means jump in. As far as whether I'm going to say it'll hold its value, I'm just not confident enough to say that. I'm not saying it won't, but I'm not confident in its value aspect. And lastly, we're doing good on time today. Not bad on time. Lastly, we have Street Masters Tide of the Dragon. This is going to be on Indiegogo. Links down below, as always. But basically, this is going to be Street Masters, some new standalone content, as well as more content. This is basically Street Masters from Blacklist. This is a well-loved game. This is a safe back on basically every single pledge level, to varying degrees, but on every single pledge level, I would say it's a safe back. Uh, the main pitch here is they're adding the new standalone expansion, The Rise of the Dragon, or Tide of the Dragon, Tide of the Dragon, and that's going to add four new fighters, two new enemies, two new stages, seven story decks and modular terrain which is a new thing for the for the game system uh black street masters is a game i have played i have enjoyed i also got rid of it eventually but it was it was a solid game i completely understand the love for it for myself i prefer playing marvel champions but that's just my own personal taste uh in terms of the game itself yeah so tons of they have a bunch of content creators lots of reviews reviews i watched when trying to make my own determination but they have the tie of the dragon pledge over here meaning when i say my own determination i mean back when i backed the original kickstarter campaign for it uh, they have the tie of the dragon pledge 50 dollars, which is going to come with the tie of the dragon plus the Kickstarter exclusive Rumble Pack. So you can see that so each of the pledge levels is going to be giving that Rumble Pack, which means no matter which pledge level you go with, there is going to be exclusive content. Combine that with a well-loved game, and I pretty sure all of these will hold their value to varying degrees. Then we have for $100, we have the original Street Masters pledge. For $100, we have the Aftershock pledge. This will require a Street Masters base game. And then for $230, you have basically everything, although it's not actually everything because it's a whole list of optional buys to go through. So like when I got my Street Masters, I paid nearly like $250, $260, and that's before getting the Rise of the Dragon, Tide of the Dragon expansion. So there's all these options over here that will add both extra stuff. We have some extra miniatures if you want to use some of the boss fights against themselves. Basically, they have these options, the Redemption Packs, let you fight with the bosses as heroes, but what if you want to fight a boss versus a boss, that's what you would want these boss minis for. So I didn't actually get that way back in the day. I was like, I there's so much content here, I don't need to worry about having an extra set so that the boss can fight himself. And if I really do, you can proxy the mini and use something else. So anyways, that is the boss minis pack, that they're extra duplicate content in order to have two characters fighting themselves. Uh, that's basically Street Masters all around. It's, it's, I mean, they're all solid backs. If you have any questions on any particular pledge level, let me know in the comments down below. But basically, all of these are likely to hold their value to varying degrees, depending on just how much content you have. This is a well-loved game, and people's only opportunity to get this much content for it is whenever they have the next Kickstarter, the next Kickstarter, the next, or Indiegogo, or whatever. And that... That is everything except for what we have coming up next week. And coming up next week, we're going to have Carnegie. So Carnegie, I think that's how you say it. Uh, basically, this is one that looks interesting. Next week is very light, by the way. There's like five Kickstarters launching next week, which usually is like 14 a week. So having five total launching next week and no particular big names is a very light week. So maybe next week we'll just sing songs or something. Who knows? And anyways, next week, so Carnegie is one that does look good. This is going to be art by Ian O'Toole. This is going to be by... I should know the company's name. The company is... The company is Quinnette Games. There we go. Quinna Games. So basically, this one, it looks very intriguing. The, the premise here is very intriguing. The premise is you have 20 rounds, 20, and each round you take one action, but one player will decide the action being taken by all players. So every round, every round, this round, all players have to take this type of action. And then all players have to do that. So it's 20 actions across the whole game, but with a determining factor of who decides which type of action gets taken. Sounds interesting. To me, that sounds right up my alley. Don't know anything else about the game. I just know it's from a company that has historically good games, from art by Ian O'Toole, who I love, and a mechanism that sounds fascinating. Oh, and the designer. The designer, too, I believe. is uh, uh, The designer is Xavier Georges. I probably butchering the name, but he also has solid games. He has Gingopolis, by the way, which Gingopolis is getting a reprint. I'm excited about that. But he has Black Angel, Troia is Twa, which I love Twa. I love Cross and City. I did not know how many... I did not know how many of the games I love. You did. That's awesome. Cool. I'm excited. I'm even more excited now. In any case, that is what's coming next week. We have Carnegie, like I said, Light Week, all things considered, and that is the video. Feels kind of short because I've gotten used to hour-long videos. That's everything. I'm Alex from Board Game Co. And until next time, have a good one.
So fun fact, I was planning on saying this either way, but I literally just got the tracking notification as we speak, so even better. But short version is, first of all, subscribe to On Table Board Games if you haven't already. She actually has a few different channels, different content, but subscribe to her stuff. Awesome stuff. Love, actually, does she have a few channels? I can't recall. I thought I've seen her more places. In any case, subscribe to On Table either way. Um, and the fact that it shows me not subscribed there, you can ignore. I am subscribed. This is my incognito tab that I use for Kickstarter stuff where I do these videos. But definitely subscribe to her stuff, solid stuff. But the reason I'm talking about this is watch ISS Vanguard. If you're interested in ISS Vanguard, which if you haven't heard of ISS Vanguard, then well, lucky you, but basically that's Awaken Realm's next Kickstarter that's going to be launching on their own Kickstarter platform, their own crowdforming, crowdforming platform of GameFound will be launching ISS Vanguard, so that's going to make a lot of money, like I would be surprised if it, less, if it was less than 2 million day one, I'd be surprised, genuinely, I want to say 4 million, but I don't want to be that excited, but ISS Vanguard will do well, it'll get a lot of money, because it's Awaken Realms, and they've been hyping this game for like 3-4 years, for a long time, we'll see, it's one of those things where it's actually primed for disappointment, so hopefully it doesn't a point we'll see how it plays out but they have two videos 25 minutes and 44 minutes going into different aspects of the game check those out to see if you're interested and the reason i'm talking about it is because i just got tracking in the other window that my uh, prototype copy is arriving this week so i'm excited i am very excited i'm telling you i'm really am excited it's very cool to me that i'm getting a prototype from waken realms that is it's cool I'm, I'm i'm a fanboy first and foremost i'm always a fanboy first and a content creator second and then all the other stuff in life in any case, so yeah, that's basically it. Uh, if you have questions, I will, of course, be doing a full review. And it's not a preview. To be very clear, I don't do previews. I was very clear about this. They're not worried, which is good. That, that makes me happy that they're not worried because I'm expecting a solid game. And we'll see how it actually plays out. And that is basically everything. Uh, until next time, I'm excited and have a good one.